Hello world, this is Cypher Vita bringing you a guide on how to install Onion OS in the Mijo Mini and Plus in 2025. I will show you the process step by step using the manual method since Onion Desktop Tools doesn't recognize my laptop's integrated SD card reader. As a bonus, I will give you a rundown of my setup for the Mini V4 with RTC support. Without further ado, let's get started. First of all, let's head to the Onion OS GitHub page. Link in the description box below. Here we have the options to use Onion Desktop Tools, but since it doesn't work with my laptop SD card reader, I will download the release and install it manually. As of the making of this video, there are two builds to install, Stable v4.3.1-1 and the v4.4 Veda. Given that I will work with the Mini V4 that has RTC, I will install the Veda version that has the fix for the screen resolution using the July 2024 firmware and also detects RTC models. The installation process is the same for either builds of versions, so choose as you see fit, keeping in mind that the Veda versions might still have some bugs. Please note that there are a couple of old firmwares that are not supported. More details can be found in the Docs installation section with options to upgrade the firmware. I won't go into that detail, so let's go back to the main page and now let's click on the version that we want to install. We will be able to see a change log for the version and scrolling down we will reach the Assets section where we can now download the Onion name file that we need. We now need to prepare the SD card. Use one of a reputable brand. Do not use the one that comes with the Mio. I'm using this SanDisk Ultra. Since I'm using one of more than 32 GB, it needs to be formatted as FAT32. Let's use Rufus for that. Link in the description box below as well. We download the version that we need and execute it. I will allow it to run in my system. Then we select the device that is the SD card. For boot selection, it's going to be non-bootable. We leave partition scheme as MBR, set file system to large FAT32. For cluster size, let's set 16 kilobytes. And finally, we click start to format the card. Once done, we can close the window. Now let's move the Onion files to the SD card. So let's begin by extracting the files of the Onion version that we downloaded by right clicking it and selecting extract all. Let's copy paste them to the SD card that we just formatted. Once done, safely remove it and now let's move to the Mijo. But before, a quick screen protector peel. Prior anything else, let's make sure that it's fully charged and turn it off. We insert the microSD card that we prepared and turn on the device. It will start the installation process so we can leave it do its thing for about 5 minutes. When it is completed, we will get this thank you and your your onion message. So appreciate it and push A to go through a quick guide on functions and key shortcuts. Next, we need to select what systems and apps we want to be installed. So for verified systems, I will add Arcade, Atari 2600, TurboGrafx CD and 16, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, NES, SNES, Pico 8, Ports, Neo Geo, Sega CD, Game Gear, Genesis, Master System, and Sony PlayStation. By pressing R1, we go to the apps. I will select Activity Tracker, Battery Monitor, Clock, Display Calibration, File Explorer, Gallery, Guest Mode, Music Player, Onion OTA Update, Quick Guide, Random Game, Search, Team Switcher, Twix and Video Player. For the Expert section, I will choose None. One last R1 press to take us to the summary where we can press A to begin the installation of the packages. At the end, it will reboot the device. If it doesn't turn on, you can just press the power button normally and now you should have Onion ready with the systems and apps that you selected. For our next step, we need to remove the card out of the media turned off. To insert it in our PC again to move the rest of the files needed to the new folders created. First, 
let's move the BIOS fires. You can take them from the SD card included by going to RetroArch, that RetroArch and System, or use your own. I will move all the ones that I heard already prepared, but here is a list of what I'm using. Some are optional that will only add the boot screen. Next, the most important fires will be the game ROMs. Those go to the respective system in the ROMs folder. I also have the box art pre-scraped from the Mijo Mini Plus. Those go in the IMG folder within each system. With that, you will be basically set, but I will add as well some additional apps, shaders, and themes. Link for all of them in the description box below. Let's start with the Java emulator. For details on this, you can check out my other video about it. Now let's also add the app Sync Team. Even though the Mini V4 doesn't have Wi-Fi, I plan on testing it by changing the SD card to the Mini Plus. For themes, I will add this for now in the respective themes folder. And finally, these overlays that I have already compiled here. This go in the overlay folder within RetroArch, that RetroArch. We are all set now to do the final configuration in the menu. First, let's turn off the menu sound in settings by lowering it down to zero. Next, let's go to apps. In clock, let's set the time and date. Since this is a V4 mini with RTC, no emulated time is needed. So we will do a test at the end of this video. Now for themes, I am using the concise black and going to tweaks, appearance, icon pack, I will select nano switch and the app icons with the M theme. To have the icon packs available from a specific theme, you need to install that theme before. Since we are already here, let's go back to the theme overrides, battery percentage, set the size to 18, horizontal offset to 10, and vertical offset to minus 1. Going back to tools, let's run the naming scripts for short names and media game list. This is to have a cleaner look. Let's sort apps from A to Z as well. Similar to my video on the Mijo Mini Plus, I will show you now the settings that I have for the main systems. For Game Boy, I use Keep Aspect Ratio On, Integer Scale Off, Game Boy Colorization Internal, and Color GB Pocket within Essentials. For the overlay, I have GB Japanese No Yellow, from the Japanese Overlays Pack with an opacity of 0.75. I save all the settings as game directory overrides. Here's a quick look on how it looks. Next, Game Boy Color. I have Keep Aspect Ratio on, Integer Scale off. I use Color Correction, GVC only, and Fast. Dark Filter Level set to 10%. For the overlay, I have GVC Japanese from the Japanese Overlays Pack, with an opacity of 0.75. Let's see how it shows now. Game Boy Advance. I have Keep Aspect Ratio and Integer Scale on, and for Video Filter, the offset of the next. Color Correction on. For the overlay, I have GVA-1 of the Osbos Pack with opacity kept at 1. Here's an example of gameplay.
For home consoles, I am using the CRT1 540 overlay from the 540p pack by Geltron with default opacity. Let's see the results. A new setting that I read about on Reddit for PlayStation games having color banding issues like Silent Hill is turning on the setting pattern within Core Options video. I will leave a link to the specific Reddit post below, here you can see the difference. Since all my setup is complete now, let's check the time using RTC. And yes, the time is updated, so RTC is working on the latest Mini V4 without changing any settings using the Onion V4.4 beta. Alright, that will be all for this one. I have only had the Mini V4 for a couple of weeks, so I'll have updates via the comments if I find a new setting or overlay different to the setup that I just showed you. Also, if you have any questions on the installation process or suggestions for my setup, just let me know down in the comments section. Without anything else to say, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.